good measurement practices are foundational to every effort in science and engineering. Hi, I'm Jake Beal, the chair of the iGEM Measurement Committee, and this video is intended to help introduce you to good measurement practices and how they can help you achieve your goals in iGEM. More information about everything discussed here can be found on the pages of the iGEM Measurement Hub. Being careful about how you measure the behavior of your cells makes it easier to tell the difference between mistakes in the lab and fundamental problems in your project, between a system that's really working and a system that's just plain unpredictable. Measurement is also an act of communication. When you use good measurement practices, you make it easier for other people to understand the value of what you've done, to be confident that what you're saying is true, and to build on your results. In short, good measurement makes your work both more likely to succeed and more likely to have an impact in the community and the larger world. Fortunately, you can approach this by remembering four simple rules of good measurement. Comparable units, process controls, appropriate statistics, and clear presentation. Let's go through these one by one. First, comparable units. For many of us, this one goes all the way back to grade school. If you go for a walk that's 10 long, do you mean meters, kilometers, or minutes? If you don't have units, nobody really knows what you did. If the instrument or assay that you're using only produces arbitrary or relative units, like a plate reader or a flow cytometer, then you can calibrate it with a stable sample whose value is known, like fluorescein and ludox for a plate reader or rainbow beads for a flow cytometer. We've provided materials in your kit and on the measurement hub to help. You can also contact measurement committee members if you'd like help in figuring out units for other types of assays. Second, process controls. You probably already know about experimental controls, which you use to test your hypothesis by making minimal changes to produce predictable, contrasting results. Process controls have a different purpose. They are how you check whether you should trust your experimental data. For process controls, you test your protocol and instruments by using samples with known behavior, such as fluorescein, wild-type cells, and GFP driven by a strong constitutive promoter. These should give the same behavior in every experiment. And if they don't, then you know there's likely a problem with your experimental data. Third, appropriate statistics. We often get in a habit of just using means and standard deviations to analyze everything. But many times, this is not the right thing to do and will distort our results. Gene expression is a complex catalytic reaction, and for that reason, its variation is expected to be a heavy-tailed distribution, which means we should generally compute geometric statistics instead. That is, means and standard deviations on the logarithm of the data. It is also important to know the difference between the mean standard deviation, such as you'd want to use to report the variation in single cell behavior, and the standard deviation of means, such as you'd want to use to report the amount of variation between replicates. Fourth, clear presentation. When you are showing your data, make sure that people can appreciate what you have done. Write your units on your axes. Include process control information for comparison. Distinguish between geometric and arithmetic statistics and use a log axis when presenting geometric statistics. If you follow these four 
simple rules of good measurement. You're likely to detect problems earlier, have an easier time debugging, and make your results easier for other people to understand and trust. Finally, I want to remind you that iGEM teams in years past have made great contributions to the measurement resources available to you by their participation in the Interlab study. And I would like to encourage all of you to participate this year. I have known so many iGEM teams that put amazing effort into wonderful and ambitious projects. That is why I hope that you will use these four simple rules in your project and thus help yourselves and others to succeed. Have a great iGEM experience and do your part to make the world a better place.